Good morning, everyone. We are we're so thrilled to have you with us this morning, and, and uh, I had a number of phone calls already this morning saying to me, I have a tree down in my front yard, or I have a branch on my house, or I have this or that going on, and that we had a, a windstorm in some areas of, of uh, our region, and some people are home trying to keep their sump pump uh, operational without hydro, and that can be challenging. And uh, there are storms in other parts of the world, we know that. Uh, we have the, uh, the war in Ukraine, we have uh, just down below our border, uh, there's, a, there's a battle for life. And many of you have watched the news, you know that, uh, that there are states that are moving in the direction of pro-life. And we're all about that here at Highway. We believe that life begins at conception. And uh, that's something that we need to be very clear about. Because we have a number of young people that I, I watch them, I follow them on Facebook, and, and you know, they, they are uh, all, all about freedom of choice and women's rights. And, and you know, we, we're all about choice and rights too. But there's, there's something about the, uh, uh, the life that God has given. I'm a little distracted by what's going on out there. <laughs> Um, we believe that, that life begins at conception. And, and there's, there's a social battle going on right now, and, and um, I, I think it's so important that we, we are aware of that as believers, where we stand, what's, what's biblical these days. And there's so many different messages that I could, I could preach and teach these days. Um, but I, I want us this morning just to focus on Jesus. It's where I want us to be. I want us to focus on the Word of God. Can I hear somebody say Amen. Among all the other things that are going on in the world, we need to keep focused and, and our priorities uh, on the Lord. And so there's a verse of scripture that I want us to, to read this morning um, from Deuteronomy chapter 32. It's a song that uh, Moses is reciting back to Israel. It's a song that Hebrews would sing. And in Deuteronomy 32, it says this, Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My teaching will drop like rain. My sayings will drip like the dew as rain drops upon the grass and showers upon new growth. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord. You must acknowledge the greatness of our God. As for God, he is the rock. His work is perfect. For all of his ways are just, he is reliable, he's a reliable God who is never unjust. He is fair and he is upright. Just one more passage of scripture from Psalms, Psalm 100. Shout out praises to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with joy. I, I think we need to remember that this morning while we sing. We need to be worshiping the Lord, how? With joy. Enter into his presence with joyful singing. Acknowledge the Lord is God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Give him thanks. Praise his name. For the Lord is good. His loyal love endures and his faithfulness through all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's sing. Stand with us as we worship and declare our praise and our faithfulness to the Lord this morning.
turn back to praise when the darkness closes in lord still i will say blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name blessed be the name ago, I don't know if you know, uh, the Judd family. Uh, a few weeks ago, Naomi Judd, who's a mother, uh, died tragically and, uh, and very suddenly. And her daughter, they had a celebration of life um, with a, a bunch of country music stars. And her daughter, Winona, got up and sang a song that, that was a hit for them back in the 90s called Love Can Build a Bridge. I just want to read the first verse for that. It says, I'd gladly walk across the street with no shoes. What, what, sorry, I'll start over. I'd gladly walk across the desert with no shoes on my feet to share with you the last bite of bread I had to eat. I would swim out to save you in your sea of broken dreams when all your hopes are sinking. Let me show you what love means. That's Jesus. I don't know how Winona could have gotten up and gotten the courage to sing that song in honor of her mom, but when I heard her singing it, that's what I was thinking, that's Jesus. And Jesus, well, the Holy Spirit is our bridge to God. He gave us the Holy Spirit as, a, as that's love, is our bridge to Jesus. But we need to be the bridge for our family to Jesus. We need to be able to tell them and pray for them and sing for them and whatever we can. Just live like Jesus for our family. For those of you that have kids or grandkids or loved ones or coworkers or schoolmates or whatever that need to hear Jesus, we need to be that bridge. And just as, as our the Holy Spirit is the bridge for us, we can, just by the way we live and the way we act, and just showing love, they'll see a difference. And maybe they'll ask a question. And maybe that question will lead them to Jesus. As we sing this next song, I encourage you to worship our God, but I also encourage you to think of someone that you need to speak the name of Jesus to in your life, whether it's a loved one or a coworker, whether it's somebody you don't really like or somebody that you really, really love and you just want to see them feel the love of God. Good morning. Uh, Pastor Rick has asked me to read a word this morning for us all. Exodus 13. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me every firstborn male. The first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. If you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb, all the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. In the days to come when your son asks you, What does this mean? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord has brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. This is why I sacrifice to the Lord the first male offspring of every womb and redeem each of my firstborn sons. 
Moving over to 1 Corinthians 16. Now about the collection of the Lord's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each, of, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Thank you so much, Glenn. Um, we have thought that it would be wonderful for you to uh, get acquainted with some of our church leaders and uh, have, we'd have some of our board members read the scripture so that you can get to know who they are. And I uh, appreciate Glenn doing that for us this morning. Um, just by way of one announcement, I, I had some others, but I think I'll save those for next week because Cortland, Cortland did such a good job with hers. Uh, I thought she was going to start to preach. <laughs> I thought that was good. That was really good. Um, just for all of those who, over the last couple of years, you're new to Highway, and, and it's, it's really exciting. As I, as I look over um, our congregation this morning, the number of new people, new faces, uh, someone was saying that... Uh, uh, who hasn't been able to come to church because of health. Uh, they had a directory uh, that was given to them recently, and they went through name after name after name, and they're looking to their spouse and saying, do you know that person? Do you know that person? And uh, just a lot of new people. And on uh, June the 12th, you want to put that in your calendar, June the 12th, we're going to have a special lunch for all of our, um, well, you're no longer guests. You've been here two, two years, you're no longer a guest. But you're, you're new to Highway in that period of time. We're going to have a lunch for you. Um, on June the, uh, the 12th. So um, put that in your calendar. Uh, it finally happened. It finally happened. How many remember Abbott and Costello? It finally happened 70 years ago, and it finally happened. Do we have that picture? <laughs> you see his name? Chin Lung Hu is on first. <laughs> he plays for the, uh, uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers and finally happened. Who's on first? <laughs> I, I, I had to show that to you. That is so funny. That is good. That is good. Well, we want to talk about this this morning. Who's first? Who's on first? Who, who's on first in your life? Is, is God first in your life? Uh, I think that's a very important question because I believe that the blessing of God flows into this church family and into your lives personally when God is first. When Jesus Christ is first. And before we move, hi, you, you know that we are almost halfway through the year. July the 2nd is, is the, the date that is halfway, and we're about to enter into June. We've got one more month to go, and then we're halfway through the year. Shh, somebody said shh. <laughs> so what I want to do is we, as we come close to that halfway point, I want us to take a look inward, and I want us to ask the church, I, I want us to ask ourselves personally, is God really first in my life? Because I, I really believe that the blessing of God depends on our answer to that question. So Glenn, he, uh, he read this text of Scripture. I'm going to read just one verse uh, of what he's already read. In Exodus 13 and 1, it says, The Lord said, now how many know the pastor didn't write this? Okay, the Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me every first, every firstborn male, the first offspring of every womb in Israel belongs to me, God says, whether man or animal. And I want you to notice this this morning as we move into this message, which is on stewardship. And so all of you who understand what the word stewardship is, I want you to shout out amen. We've got about a third of us here. So this is a timely message this morning. Uh, I want you to notice something here. The firstborn, the firstborn belongs to God. Now, that is in the Bible with 16 different times and in various forms and, and phrases. But God makes the point, God makes this point, that the firstborn belongs to me. He says, that it, they're mine. And then verse 12, 
you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb, all the firstborn males of the livestock. They belong to the Lord. Redeem with a lamb. Now notice the symbolism there. Redeem with a lamb. Every firstborn donkey. But if you do not redeem it, break, break its neck. I almost tempted to leave that out, but it, it's in the Word, so I'm going to read it. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. We're going to talk about uh, the principles of God being first, and it is throughout the Scripture, from, from the first chapters in Genesis through to Revelation, this idea, this principle that God must be first. So the first one here is that the firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. And it's the principle that, that we see in God's word over and over and over again. The firstborn must be sacrificed or, or redeemed. Now let me explain to you what the word redeemed means. Because some of you are relatively new followers of Jesus, and you're saying, what kind of church did I get myself into? There's, there's some principles here, so I, I need you to hold on. And I also need those of you who, who are already there. You're, you're already, you've got God first in your life in terms of, of your stewardship, your giving to God. So I, I want you to shed big amen once, once I say something that you agree with. And, and if nobody says amen, I'm in trouble. But to redeem means to purchase back again. It once was yours, and for some reason it's no longer yours. You lost it, and you have to, you have to purchase it back again. That's what redeem means. It's a true story. Uh, there was a very wealthy English family that invited uh, a lot of their friends uh, to their beautiful estate, their beautiful home, and uh, they were uh, just enjoying the friendship of all of those who had gathered and on the very first day, this, this great celebration could have been spoiled because the children were around the pool and one of the little ones fell into the deep end, couldn't swim. Fortunately, the gardener of this great estate heard all of the commotion, heard the screams, and rushed over to the pool, saw the child at the bottom of the pool in the deep end immediately, without thinking much at all, jumped in, went right to the bottom, brought this child back up, and this child was, was saved. Now, of course, the, the family, the parents, were absolutely uh, thrilled and so grateful to this gardener, and they said, what can we do to reward you? You've saved the life of our son. And they thought, he thought for just a little bit, and then he said this, I wish that my son could go to college. He won't have a chance. Other, I, just, I wish that my son could someday go to college and become a doctor. And this uh, wealthy family said, well, of course, we'll, we'll pay for that. We'll, we'll make sure that that happens. Years later, Sir Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of England, was stricken with pneumonia. And he was very ill, very, very ill. And the king, the king commanded that, summoned, that the best doctor in the land, how many of you would like the king to summon a doctor to your home? The king saw that Winston Churchill was not well, and, and he summoned the best doctor in the land, and his name was Sir Alexander Fleming. Some of you would know that Fleming was the guy who invented penicillin. And Dr. Fleming came to Winston Churchill's home and administered the, the penicillin. He got well. And part of the story you don't know is that Alexander Fleming was the, the son of the gardener that rescued Winston Churchill in the first place. Interesting, isn't it? Later on, Winston Churchill said this. He said, rarely has one man owed his life twice to the same person. And, and I, I just want to say to you, on a, on a much, much deeper level, our Heavenly Father has given us both physical life as well as eternal life. We owe our Heavenly Father everything. Because twice He's given us life, He has saved our life. We owe Him everything. And I, 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 just, I just pray that that awareness, that, that double indebtedness to our Heavenly Father will be underscored in all that I say. He, we, we, we owe God our life. Everything that we are. There was a little boy who had a, a little bit of a, a craftsman, and he, he started with a block of wood, and he carved out this, this 
lovely little sailboat, painted it up, and it was, it was lovely, and he put a little sail on it, and he took it down to the, down to the river, and he tied a little string on it and sent it out, and, and he was on the shore, and he was holding a little string, and, and this boat just kind of floated out in the, the, uh, the current, and, and he was just enjoying the sun and just a beautiful day. And all of a sudden, the boat had gotten out so far that it got caught in the current. And it was, it was quickly moving its way down the, the river. And so he started to pull the little boat that he had made back in again when the string broke. And off the boat goes down the river. And in a panic, he drops the string and runs, chases, tries to get this boat back again. But unfortunately, it was out in the current and it traveled so far that he could no longer even see it. At night, dark, he went back home again. A couple of days later, on his way to school, he sees his boat in the storefront window. He says, that's my boat. He goes into the shop and he says to the owner of the shop, he says, that, that's my boat. I made that boat. And the shop owner says, I'm sorry, son, but, but somebody brought that in this morning. And if you want it, you've got to pay 20 bucks to get it. The little boy didn't even go to school that day. He rushed home. He broke open his piggy bank. He got $20 out. He came back, bought that little boat that he had made, and, and he was cradling it in his arms and on, on his, his way home. He said, now, you're twice mine. I made you, and then I bought you. Now, I, I'm, I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit, you're way ahead of me. I made you, and then I bought you. You got it? God made us. Our Creator made us. And then He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to the cross to redeem us. To buy us back and set us free. Now, let, let me say this to you this morning. God gave Jesus Christ before you believed. Before you even committed your life to him, he gave his son. The Bible says this. The Bible says that, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God didn't wait to see if you would repent, to see if you would change, to see if somehow you would get worthy before he gave his son. He gave his son first while our backs were turned to him. That's important. Because it speaks to stewardship speaks to what tithing is all about. Giving to God of our tithes and giving to a, a God of our offerings. Trusting that somehow God is going to meet our needs. Even though we don't see it, even, even though we're, we're nervous about what's coming this next month, even though we, we're really not sure that we, what, what if this happens and what if that happens and, 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 and what if a tree falls on my car and I, I'm going to have to pack away a lot of money in the bank just in case things happen. No, we give to God because we trust him. Even though we don't know. Even if all the what-ifs happen, we continue to give to God. Oh, don't turn me out. Okay, just hang in there with me. It means that we're going to give to God first before we see if we have enough. We give to God first before we check everything else out. Before we see what bills we've got to pay. We give to God first. First, that's what the firstborn is all about. That's, that's the firstborn principle in the Old Testament. God will never be second in your life. He will be Lord or he won't be. If there's a race, 
God is in that race, he's never going to come in second. Think about this, Tom. If God, if God went golfing 18 holes, what would his score be? 18. Because every hole would be a hole in one. And all the golfers get that one. But he, see, he'll never miss. And I, I, I think that's what God is saying to us this morning. I will not be second in your life. He cannot be second. But listen, he cannot be second for your good. Did, did I say that right? He, he cannot come in second for your benefits. For, for his blessing to flow in your life, he must be first. God says, give to me first, put the first you have in life into my hands. Have you ever thought about this? Let me, let me try to explain it this way. What, what gave God the right to take all of the firstborn in Egypt? Firstborn. What, what gave God that right? I'll, I'll tell you. The firstborn belongs to him. That's what the principle is. All the way through Scripture. God comes and he says, I'm taking the firstborn. Exodus. In the book of Exodus, it says that you know, they're either going to sacrifice the lamb or the firstborn, because it's mine. And then God said, I can tell you how this is going to roll. How you're going to redeem the firstborn. It's by sacrificing the lamb. And putting the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. On the lintel of your home. And I, I firmly believe, no one can convince me otherwise, that if an Egyptian had decided they wanted to take the blood of the lamb and they wanted to put it over their doorposts and the lintel of their home, their son would have been saved too. God won't be second in our life. 2 Corinthians 8 and 5, in the Macedonian church, they actually pleaded. They said, please, please, give us the opportunity to give to the poor. How? Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, they first gave themselves to the Lord. You see, we're not just talking about finances when we're putting God first. We have to be giving ourselves to the Lord first. The best part, the best part of who we are needs to be God's. The best part of our day needs to be the Lord's. The best part of our week needs needs to be the Lord's. Do you know why we worship on Sunday? Two reasons. Number one, because Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday and the church felt it was important to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and that's why we worship on Sunday. The second reason we worship on Sunday is, is because it's the first part of the week. And we give the first part of the week to the Lord. That's why we worship on Sunday. As, as Christians, we, we need to be giving God first. There, there are people that believe that Monday is the first day of the week. And they think it's the first day of the week because they get up on Monday and they start making deals and phone calls and they start making money on Monday. And it's, it's an important day. That's the first day of the week. There are others that think Friday's the first day of the week or the best of the week. Why? Because partying is the most important part of their life. They work all week long so that they can party. But as Christians, we give the first part of our week, Sunday, to the Lord. We give them the best. And, and it concerns me and it troubles me a little bit that we're seeing a trend, and we have seen it for a long time, even before COVID hit, where people would come to church maybe once, maybe twice a month. I mean, you ask them, where are you going to be June the 19th? And they say, well, I don't know, it depends. I, I know where I'll be on June the 19th, because that's a Sunday. 
I, I want to give God my very best. I know where I'm going to be July the 10th, if the Lord wills. I, I know where I'm going to be on October the 16th, because those dates are a Sunday. And I want to give God my best. We need to give God our best. The firstborn belongs to God. It's a principle of giving God first things. Second, um, you need to understand the, the first fruits, the principle of the first fruits. So the firstborn must be either sacrificed or, or redeemed. The first fruits must be offered again. We'll stay in, in Exodus 13 for a while, but I want to go to chapter 23. Uh, verse 19, it says, bring the best of the first fruits of the soil to the house of the Lord your God. How, how clear can you get? Bring the best of the first fruits of the soil to the house of the Lord. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all of your crops, and then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine." The first portion belongs to God. Not just the firstborn, but the first portion. Now, I know that we have a few farmers, but not many in this place. And, and, and Dale, we're not, we're not suggesting you bring a bale of hay in uh, on Sunday. As fun as that would be, and I'm sure you would love to do it. For the most of us, it's, it's really about income. The first belongs to God. Well, let me, let me uh, go back to, do you remember when uh, the nation of Israel had left Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea, they were beginning to go into the promised land, and what was the name of the first city that they took? Jericho. First city. And do you remember what God said about the silver and the gold in Jericho? He said, set it aside for me. Set aside the silver and the gold from Jericho from me. Don't touch it. It's, it's, it's mine. Why? Why did he say? Why didn't he say, take all the gold and the silver and just give me 10% of that? Why did he say, don't touch it? It's all mine. Because it was the first city. The first belongs to God. God didn't say, I want you to go ahead, I want you to overcome, conquer ten cities, and then I want you to come back, and I want you to give me one. Nor did he say, just, just set aside, then, then you'll know that you have enough, and when you know you've got enough, and then, then you take a look at what's left over, and you, you, you give that to me. No. You know what he said? He said, when you go to Jericho... Don't take any of it for yourself. You bring all of the silver and all of the gold to my house. It's mine. Why? It sounds like God's kind of selfish, doesn't it? And some of you are thinking that God, God, God's sounding a little bit, you know, preoccupied with himself. Why did God ask? Now, what if, what if the next city you know, doesn't provide enough for us? I mean, we're coming through 40 years in the wilderness. We don't have much. What if the next city doesn't have anything? What if the, what if the third city, you know, and you know, we've, we've got bills to pay. We've got you know, mouths to feed. We, what, what if that doesn't happen? And it takes faith, doesn't it? It takes faith to give to God. It takes faith to tithe, to give God that first portion. Something else. Talking about the silver and the gold. In Joshua chapter 6, God calls the silver and gold, he calls it consecrated things. And in chapter 7, he uses a different word with a different reason how many remember when uh, they took uh, Jericho and, and then who was the guy that took some of the silver and gold? It was Achan, right? Joshua 6, God says, don't touch the consecrated things. Achan does, and then in 
Joshua chapter 7, God says, someone took the accursed things. Absolutely amazing. He's talking about the same thing. He's talking about the silver and the gold. It, 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 was, it was consecrated, and then when Achan touched it, it became accursed. And by the way, there's only one little letter between the difference of those two words, one vowel. That doesn't take much to take it from consecrated and blessed to cursed. If we, if we take what belongs to God, it's no longer blessed. If we keep it for ourselves, if, if we think that, that somehow, God, I'm not sure you're going to come through next week. I'm not sure you're going to give us enough to meet our needs next month. And so I'm going to keep this for myself. It no longer is possible for that thing to be blessed. Okay, here's the last principle. And you knew I was coming to this, but... So I, I need everybody who knows the blessing of giving to God first things to start shouting amen at this point, okay? Help me out, help me out, because you're getting real quiet here. The, the tithe must be first. Leviticus 27 and 30 says, a tithe of everything, that is all, right? A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil uh, or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord. I want you to notice, it is a tithe of everything everything fruit of the trees grain of the field no matter what it is it is the lord's now i want to ask you a question how many believe that stealing is wrong okay i'm i'm, I'm worried about some of you <laughs> how many know there are consequences to stealing do you believe stealing from god is wrong I don't want to steal from anybody. I certainly don't want to steal from God. It belongs, the tithe belongs to God. Firstborn belongs to God. First fruits belong to God. The tithe belongs to God. It's not mine. Now let's, let's because there are many people who are relatively new believers and, and you might never have heard anybody talk about this because it's scary stuff. And you're wondering whether anybody's going to come back next week. But I, I need to say this because it is, it is biblical and I want you to be blessed. I really want the blessing of God to flow in your life. So let's, let's say, for example, uh, you, you, you come in and you do some work for us and we're really generous. And, and uh, all week long you're, wor you're working and we're going to lay uh, 10 $100 bills out on the table. How many are quick at math? You can tell me how much that is. We should talk to our bankers here. <laughs> the thousand dollars, okay? I use those numbers because it's really easy for my simple head to work out 10%. How much is 10%? You have 10 $100 bills, a thousand dollars. We pay you that for the week. What is 10% of that? It's one of those $100 bills, right? It's God's. It's the first. Pick it up, you leave, you go back home, stretch it out in your kitchen table, and you got one of those $100 bills goes to the electric company, hydro. You got another one of those $100 bills that goes to the gas company, and you got another one of those $100 bills that goes to the telephone company, and I wish they were that cheap. But one of those is God's. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting it's $100. For you, God might be, might be saying, okay, yeah, I'm going to really cause you to trust me. I, I, I'm not going to keep it at $100. It'll be $120 or, one, or whatever it, it, it is. And I, I'm really wanting not to be legalistic with this, but I, I, I need to share this, this with you. You, you. you pay all those bills. You're concerned about meeting your needs. I, I get that. I understand that. But don't take what is God's. Remember, God says, I need to be first in your life. I want to pour blessing upon blessing upon blessing in your life. And 
I want your heart. I must be first. You start calculating and, and you're wondering and you're worrying a little bit. You know, there, there are times when, you know, we get, we get paid once a week and we used to get a check, but, but our secretary is, she's really good at, at getting that money into our bank account without a check. That, that's really cool. But my wife and I, at the beginning of the year, we, we sit down and we, we talk about what we want to make sure that we give to God through the whole year. We want to make sure that at the very least, we've got, we've got that tithe, that 10% there. And then we, we say, okay, what else? Tithe offerings, what, where, where else are we going to give, give to God? And I'll tell you something, we have never, ever, ever worried about having enough. God has met our needs. Now, there are times when it was pretty lean. But God is faithful. God has always met our needs. The first portion, that, that, that first portion that becomes God's redeems all the rest. Are, are you hearing me? That first portion that is God's redeems all all the rest now i may use god's portion to pay the hydro bill but i'll tell you something ontario hydro isn't interested in blessing you ontario hydro it hasn't got their eye on you to make sure that every one of your needs is met god's is god cares and you can trust that god will meet your needs amen amen Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Now about the collection, Glenn read this one as well, for God's people, as those that were in Jerusalem that were in need, do what I told the Galatians church to do on the first day, not on the second day of the week, on the first day of the week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, save it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Now, let me, let me say this to you. I believe with all of my heart that if everyone in our church took what God had blessed them with and set aside that portion which is God's, we would never have needs. I've, I've had people call me on the telephone and say, Pastor, I have got a, a, a surefire way of you raising revenue. We're going to sell calendars. And that will raise revenue for you. How, how about this one? I have had people tell me, if you, if you sign up for this long distance plan and you get your church to sign up for this long distance plan, it will bless your church financially. <laughs> Thank you very much. Click. God's plan is not a long distance plan. God's plan to bless you, God's plan to to meet your needs is to make sure that first of all, he has your heart. And then you give out of that first portion. You give. And God, and I'm not not talking about prosperity gospel because prosperity gospel is all about me. I'll I'll tell you, prosperity gospel, it it is not the gospel. You won't find it in the Word of God because it's all about me. It's all about me getting my needs met. And and I've heard preachers preach, and and it almost, it it, it sickens me. When when a preacher will stand up and say, if you give God so much, he will multiply it. There will be a hundredfold. And and he he gets going, and, and he gets people all excited about the riches and the treasures that God is going to pour into their lives that's not the gospel. Man, that, that stinks. That smells like smoke. I know where that comes from, and it's not from God. Because God knows that if we start getting that as a priority, if, if we want to have, if we just want to have our lives padded and prosperous, and it won't be long before God's cut out of the picture altogether. It'd be all about me.
there was a, a pastor that went uh, visiting um, one of his uh, congregation members, and and uh, he went in to sit down in the living room, and and uh, she said, Pastor, you just wait here. I, I, I'm going to go make us some tea, and I just fresh baked cookies or butter tarts or something. And and uh, so he he sat down, and his mouth was watering, ready for those butter tarts. And 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 as as she's in the kitchen there, he's looking around, and he sees her Bible uh, there on on the uh, the coffee table. He picks it up. He starts leafing through her Bible, and he sees something really strange. In several of the columns of the Bible, there are the letters T. P. And it's more pages, T, P. And, and throughout the whole Bible, and, and she comes back and she puts the tea beside him and, and, and the butter tarts there. And um, he says, uh, you know, I, I just, I love uh, when I, I see the Bible out and, and I know that people are reading their Bibles, it's wonderful, but I've got a question for you. I hope you don't mind. I, I've kind of looked through your Bible and I saw these two letters quite frequently in the column opposite some verses. And, and she turned to him and she said, oh, pastor, those, those letters are all, if you noticed it, those letters are all next to promises in God's word that, that I have personally uh, read and, and, and they've been a part of my prayer life. I take them as my own, those promises. And she says, I've, I've tried to live them out and, and God has been so faithful those verses are tried and proven. Those verses, those promises are tried and they are proven. God never breaks his word. And the reason why I preach this message through this morning because I want you to give your heart to God I want you to be trusting him and his word because his word will never fail you. And your walk with God will become rich and beautiful and rewarding as you make him first in your life. And one of the best ways, and God knows this, one of the best ways to, to, to show that God is first in your life is through giving. Now, I've, I've had some people who have taken us out uh, for a meal. They've done other things for, for my wife and I, and then afterwards they said, now, Pastor, that's our tithe. I don't want your tithe. It's not mine. Don't, don't, don't bless me and think somehow that you know you're winning God's favor. I don't want your tithe. Because I can't bless you the way he can. I can't enrich your spiritual life. I try as much as I can, but I, I can't bless and enrich your spiritual life the way he can when you make him first. Let me, let me read this, this last verse. Micah 3 and, and, and 10, and I know, I know I'm over time, but this is your second message. Cortland preached the first one. This, this is the second one. If you go down into the Caribbean, you might get three messages on a Sunday. So, and they're all good, aren't they? Yeah. Micah, uh, or Malachi, I'm sorry, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 says this, bring the whole tithe. 10% is where it starts. Like, I, I don't want to get legalistic here, but um, nothing less than that anyway. Bring the whole tithe, what God is calling you to, surrender to him into the storehouse it folks this is the storehouse this this place this place where you worship this place that, that you say this is my church home this is my church family it's it's out of here that ministry flows bring it into the storehouse not parachurch organizations and missions organizations it's the storehouse that there may be food in my house. We would never have to sell calendars. We'd never have to get into long-distance plans. The long-distance plan isn't God's plan. Tithing is. And we will have enough. We'll have enough for children's programs. We'll have enough for youth programs. We'll have enough. For, we, we've got a roof project coming up, haven't we, Glenn? There's a little tear on Glenn's eye right now because <laughs> we had the first quote. 
We will have enough for every missions program, for every student and youth program. We will have enough for every outreach program, for, for, for the, the, the cooperative care center, the, the reaching out to the homeless. We'll have enough for all of that if God's people got this. We would never have to go to the effort of any kind of a special fundraising program because it would be here. He says, that there may be food in my house, enough. Test me. This is the only place that God says this. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Now, don't take it that that's, that's just kind of financial blessings. I'll tell you, spiritual bl- I, I would rather have spiritual blessings than financial blessing any day of the week. Test me in this. I, I, I know one pastor who, who challenged his church, and I won't do it because I haven't talked to the board about this yet, but he, he said this. He said, I challenge you for the rest of the year. You tithe. You give to God faithfully, regularly. You make sure that it's the first portion. You give that to God every week or month or whatever it might be. And he said, if you don't, at the end of the year, if your faith has not grown, if you don't feel yourself enriched spiritually, if you don't feel yourself closer to God after giving all, he said, I'll give that back to you. I'll give it all back. Like I said, I, I, I haven't talked to the board about this yet, so. <laughs> but I feel like doing it. Because I trust God. I, if you do it with the right heart, if you do it with the right attitude, if you do it by giving your heart first to God and listening to the Spirit, I don't have any worries at all. God will meet your needs. And your spiritual life will be so rewarded. He hasn't had one person come back to him, not one, and say, yeah, that didn't work, when they gave it with the right attitude. I, I, I want you, I want you, I want you to be blessed. I want you to know the Lord. I want your, your walk with Jesus to be so rich, so beautiful. Give your heart to the Lord. 